Hey teachers, today students will regroup ones as tens and in their mini geometry exploration, they will be exploring triangles. So you're gonna open reminding students that yesterday we looked at two dimensional shapes. We can also name shapes based on how many sides and angles they have. Any shape that has three sides and three angles is called a triangle. Everyone say that, triangle. And the word triangle starts with tri. Tri means three kind of like a tricycle has three wheels. So let's look at all these different shapes and let's circle all the triangles. We know that we're gonna circle the shapes that have three angles and three sides. Teachers here, you still wanna go through and quickly model how to make sure you're circling all the triangles. Let's count. How many sides and angles does this shape have? Four, nope, not a triangle. Let's check here, count the sides, how many, three? Count the angles, how many? Three. Great, so it's a triangle because triangles have three sides and angles. Keep going, this is six, not a triangle. This has three sides and angles, so it's a triangle. You get the idea, keep going. Then give kids the opportunity to practice drawing some triangles. This might be hard, but it's good for kids to struggle through. So they should get out their whiteboards, draw some triangles, work with their partners. If kids are struggle, struggling, one thing they can do is draw three dots and then connect them. That's another scaffold you can use. And then into more practice, let's circle the triangle again. Let's go through each shape and count how many sides and angles it has. That's not a triangle. It has five sides and five angles. This one has three, so it's definitely a triangle. And let's see if there are any more. This shape has six sides and angles, so that's not a triangle. Great, so B is our triangle. We know that triangles are two-dimensional shapes that have three sides and three angles. So this day, you're starting your shapes poster and you just have triangles on it. Maybe you build in a quick turn and talk. What shapes in real life have you seen that are the shape of a triangle? Turn and talk to your partner, share out a few examples, and then write into your mini lesson. Today, students will regroup ones as tens, and this is not a new skill. They have regrouped ones as tens before. The only new thing is that they have an extra place, so we will see some students who, instead of regrouping ones into tens, they will re regroup ones into hundreds and carry this one over to the hundreds place. So we just wanna be really clear that when we're adding, if we have too many ones, we regroup them into tens. 10 ones become a 10. Other times when we're adding, if we have too many tens, we regroup them into hundreds. Hundreds become tens. So really clear here in our place value language and explanation. Let's again turn and talk about how we can use place value to help us add, have kids share out. Well, today we're gonna think about how place value can help us regroup ones into tens. We know that 10 single ones is the same as one group of 10. So today when we're adding, if we have 10 or more ones, we have to take 10 single ones and regroup them into a group of 10. So if we add up our ones and we have 13 ones, do we have to regroup thumb up or down? Yes or no? Yes, we do have to regroup. If we have nine ones, thumb up, yes or down, do we have to regroup? No, we don't have to regroup. What about if we have 10 ones, do we have to regroup? Thumb up or down? That's right, yes, we have to regroup. So today when we're adding, we have to pay special attention to our ones place. If we ever have 10 or more ones, we have to regroup. Let's think about how we can use that to help us solve 149 plus 135. We know that we can use place value to help us add. 149 has 100, four tens, and nine ones. We're gonna add 135. That has 100, three tens, and five ones. Well, we know that sometimes when we're adding, we have to regroup. So we always have to start in the smallest place, just in case we have to take ones and turn them into tens, or tens and turn them into hundreds. So let's start by adding nine ones and five ones. Let's count on nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I have 14 ones. I know that I can't put 14 ones in the ones place. Instead, I have to regroup. It means I have to take 10 single ones and regroup them into a new group of 10. After I regroup, I have four ones left over. And that makes sense because when I counted up 14 ones, I see that 14 has one 10 and four ones. So I took my one 10 to the tens place and I kept my four ones in the ones place. Now let's count up how many tens we have. We have four ones and three ones 
and this one extra 10 that we just regrouped. So four and three make seven, and one more makes eight. Now let's go to the hundreds place. We have 100 and one more hundred, so that makes two hundreds. So 149 plus 135 is 284. And remember when we were adding up our ones, we added up nine ones and five ones and we had 14 ones. So we knew that we had to take 10 single ones and regroup them into a group of 10. Let me show you how to do it with digits. Same thing here, we're adding 149 plus 135. I'm gonna circle my sign so I remember that I'm joining two parts. Starting in the smallest place, nine plus five, what is it? 14. Just like over here, I can't put 14 in the ones place. Instead, I have to regroup. Look, 14 has one 10 and four ones. I took this 10 right next door to the tens place, not all the way over to the hundreds place. Just like here, I took my 10 single ones and I made a new group of 10. Great, now let's add our tens. Four tens and three tens, and this one extra 10 that I regrouped. So four and three is seven, one more makes eight. Now I go to the hundreds place. 100 and another 100, that makes two hundreds. So 149 plus 135 is 284. You can see when I used my cubes and when I used my digits, when I had 10 or more ones, I had to regroup 10 ones into a group of 10. Remember when I'm adding, I always regroup ones into tens. And then just into lots and lots of practice together.